On Veterans Day, we celebrate our military from every service and every generation. Freedom requires people of character to stand up for America, no matter the challenge. This Veterans Day, the Jedberg Podcast, the Jedberg Media Channel, and the Green Beret Foundation are proud to announce our partnership with the University of Health and Performance. Located outside of Bentonville, Arkansas, UHP is dedicated to providing our transitioning service members with the skills needed to build careers in health and fitness and as entrepreneurs. UHP is leading the way in showing private industry just how valuable our veterans will be for the next generation of America. While at UHP, I spent some time with Senator John Bozeman, an Arkansas native and the ranking member of the Senate Committee on Military Construction, Veterans Affairs, and Related Agencies Appropriations. Senator Bozeman is the son of an Air Force Master Sergeant and has made national security a top priority of his tenure. The Senator and I discussed his initiatives to improve quality of life for service members and their families, why building world-class facilities is critical to recruiting, and how national security is the foundation of a strong economy. We also shared why all leaders need to bring the country together to get things done for the American people. Watch, listen, or read all our Veterans Day coverage. Follow the Jed Burke Podcast and the Green Beret Foundation on social media. Listen on your favorite podcast platform and watch us on YouTube as we show why America must continue to lead from the front, no matter the challenge. Senator, thanks for joining no, me on the Jed Burke Podcast. very much. Well, we're out here at the University of Health and Performance. We're outside of, uh, you know, up here in the Northwest Arkansas and I've never been to Arkansas. So, you know, you, you as a senator from this amazing state, I've only heard wonderful things about it. And when I was coming in, you know, they talk about the Ozarks and the Lake of the Ozarks. I've seen the show, uh, which, uh, which I understand has drastically increased <laughs> some of the tourism around the area. But what an amazing place. I mean, absolutely wonderful. It's a beautiful place. Lots of uh, hills and uh, rivers, streams, all those lakes, all those kind of things. And... Uh, Quality of life is excellent. Lots of nice people to go along with all that. You've been very focused in your tenure as a senator and prior to that in the medical field on veterans initiatives and supporting our veterans. I think there's five five bases here in Arkansas, uh, different components of, of the military. And it's become really a, a critical importance to you and your tenure here to support our veterans. We're sitting here on Veterans Day. You've come out here to this to this event. Why has it been so important to you? Well, it's really important. In, in regard to the regular military, our bases that we have here, again, because of quality of life, because of the fact that people embrace the military here, so patriotic, you know, really want these things here. We don't have to worry about a lot of the, the regulatory atmosphere that you see in a lot of area, other areas. Um, it's just a great story to tell. It's not only good for our area, but it's good for the country. It's a great use of resources. My dad did 20 years in the Air Force. Master Sergeant. Master Sergeant, uh, retired uh, as a Master Sergeant, joined when he was 17, uh, wound up as a waist gunner on B-17s, got through that, stayed in, and so I understand how important these things are. And, you know, we talk about veterans, and it always is a family affair. You know, this is something... Uh, you know, it's you, the whole family, you know, signs up and you realize pretty quickly that you're part of something that's much more important than yourselves here. One of the in, other initiatives that you have on in your various Senate committees that you're a part of is infrastructure. Yeah, yeah. And the building of infrastructure around military bases and stuff. You know, we have seen massive advancement and moder modernization of our military infrastructure and the bases. I mean, I, I entered in 2001 or sorry, in 2003, I'm a product of 9-11 in 2001. I had the choice because I studied broadcast journalism at Boston University. And I said, well, what am I going to do? I've already you got your good voice. <laughs> I got to work on that. <laughs> I, you know, I have, I have I to practice. I have to practice it, you know, sometimes. You got to get the deepness <laughs> a little bit. But I mean, people like Tom Brokaw, Peter Jennings were my heroes. And I looked up to him and then 9-11 happens. And I'm looking at this and I'm saying, you know, what am I going to do? I'm a junior in college. I'm going to go to you know maybe a, a small market in the middle of America, maybe Arkansas, and I'm going to build this resume, and it's going to be the back then we had the actual VHS tapes, right. or there's these guys with beards, long hair, they're riding horses through Afghanistan, mm -hmm. building up forces and combating an enemy that chose to do us different. harm. And I said, I gotta, I, yeah, exactly. I said, I got to go do that. And if I want to do journalism, I'll do that later. But you know, I'm a product of that. And when I went in, our, it, our bases weren't very nice. They were old. They, we didn't have a lot of uh, modernization. The barracks were still World War II barracks. 
but we've seen so much of that change over the last 20 plus years. What do we have to look forward to as we continue to advance and modernize our military? Well, I think it's really important, and, and the world is different now even than it was in, 20, uh, in 2003 when you joined. But uh, people are different also. Uh, the job market is pretty strong in America right now. In fact, labor issues are huge problems. So people have a lot of choices. Uh, we have a volunteer army. You know, it's, it, recruiting is difficult. It's hard to get anybody to make long-term commitments to anything right now. And so you have to have the facilities, uh, the, the quality of life issues, and then so importantly, uh, make sure that they're safe. So, no, it's, it's different. We're working really hard to create those facilities to give the military what they need, you know, to go forward and, and be able to do that. If not, we're not going to we're not going to have uh, young men and women like yourself, to, you know, who will step up and sort of. Yeah, I think, you know, I've had been fortunate to speak with so many senior leaders from the military, primarily from Special Operations Command within the Army and uh, and Special Forces Command. Also had a chance to sit down with the Sergeant Major Mike Weimer, the Sergeant Major of the Army, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, where we talked a lot about recruiting yeah, yeah, yeah. and we talked a lot about, you know, what is it going to take to get folks to continue to raise their right, right hand when the military is not front and center in so much, but we know that there's an enemy and an adversary out there that is looking to come after us. There's been a bit of, there's two conversations being had within national defense right now. And you've been very big on, you know, national defense. We have to put our effort behind national defense. We don't live in this world where everybody's hugging and hoping that we're all going to get along. That's not reality. The reality is, is there's terrorist organizations who are reconstituting, looking to do us harm. And there's organizations that are nation states, whether it be Iran or China uh, or Russia, who have capacity and capability. When you look forward and you think about the next fight, America's next battle, what do you think it is? Well, I think it's really diff difficult. The Middle East is in, in turmoil. Uh, you've got uh, Ukraine. The whole world is watching that. Depending on what we do there is going to greatly influence the Chinese as they're looking at uh, Taiwan. We're so blessed. You know, we've got Canada and Mexico as our neighbors. Uh, we fight a little bit. You know, it's, it's like family. You know, you squabble, but you're friends. You know, you like each other. So many other countries, their neighbors, you know, they're looking at each other with, with eyes of, you know, how do we conquer these people? Mm -hmm. And we just don't experience that here. But sadly, much of the world is like that. So I think we've got several places that we have to look at. And, uh, you know, the, the thing to do is to be ready, you know, to have, the, have a good economy, you know, which drives all this. And then again, as Reagan said, and so many others, peace through strength. We've gone through... Definitely probably the longest political cycle, election cycle in, in at least modern history. People will often say now that it was one of the most divisive, but we've also talked on this show about, you can go back to the 1800s, you know, Aaron Burr shot somebody. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know I mean? So it, there's always been this conflict that ramps up as we go into a, a charged election, especially when you have when you have so many issues that are so polarizing. We're out of it now. President Trump won in a decisive manner across the country. I think even last night they, they called the Arizona. And so, you know, the election, as far as ballot counts at the presidential level, are, is now over. But now the country's got to come together. We have to forge a path. What do you see as the priority now for, you know, the Senate now comes back to the, the, uh, the Republican Party. We're still waiting on the House, but it looks like that will, too. As the Republicans now have all branches of the government, what are you looking forward to and what's going to be on that agenda? Well, it's interesting you mentioned the, the thing about, you know, that there's always been turmoil, and that is the case. I was in the House for nine years. You can go there. There's a picture of George Washington. And, you know, around some time in the early part of our country, they actually outlawed weapons on the House floor. And if you look at his picture, they've even painted out his sword, you can see the... Oh, really? Yeah, you can see the top, the handle, but they actually painted out his sword, so even he's not carrying a weapon on the House floor. So these things have a long history. I do think our country's divided, though, and uh, and we need to bring it together. And so uh, we'll go back, we'll have elections uh, you know, on our side, get, get uh, you know, kind of reconstituted and uh, get our committees in line and then just roll our sleeves up and get to work 
in the Senate, the reality is in order to get something passed, you have to, it has to be somewhat bipartisan. You need 60 votes to get it done. That's not bad in the sense it really does force you to work together to create a product. So we're looking forward to doing that. I think we can do that. I'll give you some great examples. You know, in the last several years, we've done more for veterans working together, Democrats and Republicans, than we have, you know, in, in decades. The PACT Act, uh, you know, various things like that, commu the community care programs, all of that was done in a very, very bipartisan way. So hopefully we can follow through, not only with our veterans, but with our armed, armed forces and so many other things, the economy. Americans just don't have any money right now. You know, they're in a situation where they look back and uh, they are in a lot worse situation than they were four years ago. And the problem is they really don't see a lot of hope going forward. So, you know, we've said that we can jump in, roll our sleeves up, working together to make a change in that area and so many other areas. Now it's time that we've got to actually perform. Yeah. I think it's an exciting time for America. Exactly. You know, I, I, I think that there's, you know, we, we talk about the future, we talk about change, you know, and I think regardless of what candidate won, there was going to be a, somewhat of a change. Yeah, yeah, you know, something sure. was going to change, right? It didn't be exactly the same. But I think now it comes down to how do we rally behind? You know, how do we rally behind? In the military, we talk all the time about order, you know, orders, say, quote unquote, orders. And in special forces, the beauty of the special forces team is that you have these 12 individuals on the, the operational detachment and everybody gets a voice. But when the decision is made, everybody gets in line and then they execute on that decision. And I'm hoping as we move forward now into this new era, that that's what America's going to do. Yeah, yeah. No, I'm, I believe with you all are. Like I say, I grew up in a military family. My dad was a master sergeant. Uh, I also play football at Arkansas. It's the same mentality. You know, you are, you know, you work hard in the off season. You're you're vying for a position uh, during uh, the off season. You look at each other and you you almost kill the guy that's, you know, the the step above you. At the end of that, when they put the final depth chart, then you come together as a team and work hard together. And the other realization is is that the the harder you work to help your teammate the better off you are yeah. because you're all going to be successful. And so those are, the, those are kind of simple truths that we just need to continue to talk about and distill. And people like you are a great example of that. Well, Senator, I appreciate you taking a couple of minutes to talk to me. We've got a lot going on here. The governor's coming now. And then we got an event we got to go to. So, <laughs> uh, but it's amazing to, uh, to be out here and get to spend some time and talk to you. Well, thank you very things. much. I look forward to talking to you in the future. Absolutely. I'd love to come down to D.C. and see you. No, for sure. And thanks for a great show. This is, that's really what it's all about is just getting good information out to the, out to the public and uh, as to what's going on. Thank you. Appreciate you very much. Thank you. American Jedbergs went on to form the foundation of the United States Special Forces and the Special Activities Director of the Central Intelligence Agency. Thanks for listening to the Jedberg Podcast, an official program of the Green Beret Foundation. I'm your creator and host, Fran Richopi. Join us next week for a new episode on Apple, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts. Check us out on YouTube for full episodes, highlights, and other long and short form content. If you like what you heard, give us a like and leave a review. Follow the Jedberg Podcast and the Green Beret Foundation on LinkedIn, Instagram, Facebook, X, or Threads. Send your comments and inquiries to Fran at JedbergPodcast.com. As former members of Special Operations Forces, the Jedberg Media Channel and the Green Beret Foundation remain committed to supporting all generations of U.S. Army Special Forces and their families. Thanks for joining us on this episode. How you prepare today determines success tomorrow. <laughs>